Good. Thanks, Debra. All right, so we'll be recording this workshop because um, if ever that you you go later on, we will be sending a recording after this workshop. So we'll be emailing you your recording. OK, so. Can you now see my screen? Can you all see my screen? If yes, please type two if you can see my screen. OK, so. Good afternoon again, uh, everyone. Once again, my name is Aldrich. So I'm your host for this afternoon. And this afternoon, we'll be having the intro to data analytics, working with data sets. So before anything else, you can all screenshot this photo, join our Discord server. It's a student's networking community. So from here, you could chat and you know connect with everyone who's who's on the same goal as you, who's one, who wants to uh, transition their career into tech. All right, so just a few reminders. The more you learn, the more you earn. Who agrees to this quote? Okay, so take down notes. Please mute your mic. And also, of course, prepare your questions. There will be a Q&A portion towards the end. All right, so um, before we start, I would like to request if everyone could, uh, you know, sh sh turn on their cameras so that we could have a picture, if that's okay. Yeah. All right. Nice. Nice. Good afternoon, everyone. So let's wait for the rest who wants to turn on their cameras. Okay. This is great. All right, anyone more? Anybody else wants to, to join the picture? Okay, so smile, guys. One, two, three, smile. Okay, good job. So I'll share my screen again. Mm -hmm. There. All right, so let me now introduce to you guys our speaker for this afternoon. So his name is Jude. I know you might pronounce it as Judd, but his name is Jude Ryan Valiente. He's wow. from the Philippines, same as me. All right. So right now he's a data analytics ventures um, automation engineer. Sorry, let me just change that for a second. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So um, without further ado, he also uh, will share later on how he became a data analyst no, in, in his career right now. So guys, let us all welcome uh, Jude Ryan Valiente. Let's give Hello, him a everyone. virtual clap. <laughs> thanks, thanks for having me. So thanks, Aldrich, for the introduction. Um, I, I, I understand. I, I will introduce myself further later. So let me start by sharing my screen. And let me know once it's visible on everyone's end. Probably type three in chat. <laughs> yeah. All right, great. Okay, so let's start. So um, this workshop will be an introduction to data analytics, and it's particularly with working with data sets. So first of all, thanks a lot to Aldrich and the team. I appreciate the invite. Uh, it's a it's really an honor to share my experience as a as a data analyst and as, and as an IT professional. So without further ado, let me start my presentation. So yeah, just to highlight today's agenda. First, I will share uh, a bit, uh, introduce myself, share more about my journey into data analytics and next we would cover what data analytics is and lastly we will have a question and answer portion where again like Aldrich mentioned earlier uh, if you have questions during the during the discussion um, please take note like take down your notes and then you can ask freely later on so learning outcomes of this of this workshop. So there are three learning outcomes that we want to cover. First is um, what is data analytics? So understanding what it is and what it's not. The second one is to understand data sets, uh, mainly um, looking at structured and unstructured data. 
And lastly, um, I will have sort of like a simulation how to work with data sets as a data analyst. Uh, and specifically having a really good uh, understanding of the fundamentals and the basics of being a data analyst, um, particularly with relational diagrams. Okay. All right. So let me start by introducing myself. Once again, I'm Jude Ryan Valiente. I'm an auto, currently an automation engineer, and I'm also a professional scrum master. So I'm from the Philippines. I graduated with uh, a double degree. I took chemistry and applied computer systems. So I started my journey uh, working in Accenture. So I worked in Accenture for um, around eight months where I uh, personally joined a boot camp in, in Accenture. So next, I uh, not, uh, not uh, later on, uh, I, I moved to Philip Morris International. Uh, if you're familiar with their products, um, the most famous one is uh, Marlboro. Uh, soon after, I moved to Procter & Gamble as an IT manager. Uh, I worked as a project manager and solution manager for image recognition while being a subject matter expert for Power BI. And lastly, now I am currently an automation engineer in Data Analytics Ventures Inc. So eh, along, along, my, uh, along the course of my career, I have always been a, I consider myself as an, uh, a, a, as an automation expert. Uh, and I have a very deeply rooted um, uh, understanding of data analytics, which is why I was able to progress my career uh, into, dif in into these different types of fields of companies. So uh, a bit about myself, uh, just to share, I, I, I listen to podcasts and I, I like um, reading books about philosophy. I also like watching anime and watching movies. And my interests uh, include gaming and working out, playing basketball, and uh, playing music as well. So yeah, um, let me start now by sharing my journey. So I mentioned earlier uh, I started in um, Accenture as a as a software developer, as a software engineer. So I worked under Avanad. So Avanad is the partnership between Microsoft and um, Accenture. So our the 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 work that we had uh, mainly focused on um, Microsoft systems. So I learned the fundamentals of data analytics while in boot camp, and I also learned uh, SQL in 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 the boot camp. So just a highlight of the learnings that I had. So the boot camp actually spanned for a month, oh, an entire month, where we started with um, this course, uh, particularly uh, working with data sets uh, before we dive deeper into um, SQL, learning SQL, how to write, um, how to create tables, managing databases, and eventually um, generating insights using reporting uh, but I would like to highlight that Power BI is a really good, um, a really good platform that we can use. Uh, in fact, Power BI is free as well. So if you're interested to learn more about Power BI uh, after this call, uh, feel free to feel free to contact me um, if if I can share you some um, some links to to learn on more on Power BI. So next, after the boot camp, um, I applied my learnings uh, um, from the boot camp. So I created and managed databases mainly in, in SQL. So how that looks, it basically, um, I, I run the, the database, I run a server, and then I create different databases, I maintain the databases, I make sure that the data is, uh, is rich enough to generate insights, and I also make sure that um, data is ingested properly into, into the servers. And if you can also see here on the left-hand side, um, you can see a diagram. So this is really, this is where we will um, deep dive further later. Uh, uh, but just a background, this is really where it starts um, your, your journey into data analytics, understanding this diagram here. So 
once you do have an, a deep understanding of uh, relational diagrams and data structures and data modeling, um, the date your journey into data analytics will be smooth sailing. So next, I mentioned that I, I, I consider myself as an automation expert. So I did automate a lot of stuff, um, automating manual reports mainly to Power BI. I assume we're all familiar with uh, Microsoft Excel. Um, so you can, instead of um, copying, pasting things, uh, creating your own um, uh, formulas in Excel, you can, we can build a very holistic uh, uh, approach to, to the data to ensure that the insights are very, um, very well, well defined. So this is just a sample of what I developed um, I just to share as well. I I did this under under four hours. So I was asked by um, someone from from the HR to to share and create a report and generate insights from a LinkedIn Learning uh, metrics that we uh, LinkedIn Learning Excel file that they shared with me. So the Excel file was mainly. Um, uh, really an unstructured data, which I will share later on. Um, there are a lot, there are lots of insights that you could generate, but with a deep understanding of data structures, data modeling, I was able to uh, generate this report um, and and relate tables, create tables to to easily um, come up with this report. So lastly, uh, I also do solutioning. So I. Um, and solution designing. Uh, I developed various solutions in different fields. So just an example, um, I created a, a budget monitoring system in Microsoft Power Apps. So it's a low code uh, application. Uh, but again, with uh, it, although it is on, on the front end, it's an app that users can, can interface with um, creating uh, creating requests, monitoring the budget. Uh, it's really more on uh, how did I manage to to um, to ma to build the data on the back end. So with good understanding of once again data modeling and data structures, uh, you will you will reach far in your career in um, in the IT field. So another another solution that I designed, I created a clock in clock out system for for the employees in in my current company. And even as simple as an Excel file, you can create uh, a transactional. Um, a transactional application. So for example, um, you are working under sales and they want to input uh, uh, date sales data into Excel. So instead of um, writing it down or like putting it in um, in tables where human error is um, inevitable, I would assume, uh, interfacing it in, in such a manner uh, would would be extremely helpful, and again, it automates the process and relates it to the back end of the system. So now let's proceed more into uh, data analytics. So let's deep dive into what it is. So it is the process. Data analytics is the process of analyzing raw data in order to draw out mean, meaningful and actionable insights. So the key word here is meaningful and actionable insights. So imagine someone gives you a an Excel file or someone gives you raw data, whatever that data may be, uh, be that um, uh, sales data, be that uh, manufacturing data, be that logistics data. Um, as long as it is raw, you, you as a data analyst, you have to process that data, do some transformations, and then draw out the meaningful and actionable insights. So that is where um, data analysts really uh, contribute value to the business. So what is data analytics? So what it what is it and what it's not? So data analytics inspects data in a micro scale. So if you've noticed the examples I shared earlier, it's really more on the on a particular process or of or, or a particular field. So, for example, sales data. 
Um, it doesn't involve uh, other data apart from transactions in sales. So it doesn't involve like um, the weather today or um, what day it is or like the current um, political climate. It doesn't really involve any anything else. It really looks at uh, the data on a micro scale. What it's not, on the other hand, it's not uh, data anal analytics doesn't analyze data on a macro scale. So when you do an analysis on a macro scale, that is using uh, machine learning and um, uh, artificial intelligence. So data analytics, as I've mentioned earlier, generates insights. So again, the, the key is to, to gather the data, transform the data, and then generate the insights. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to use sophisticated analytics tools, so like statistics, statistical analysis, and such. Uh, you just really have to to create uh, a structured data and create reports and insights from generate insights from that. So it's widely used in sales, healthcare, and manufacturing, and practically in any field actually. So. It doesn't predict certain outcomes. Um, that is again on the machine learning side of things. Uh, it is a form of business intelligence. So business intelligence mainly uh, it's another word for data analytics. If you if you've been searching on on this field for on the web or on YouTube videos or and such. So business intelligence mainly means that. Um, whatever insights we get, we gather from from the reports that is being used as uh, the the driver for the business. So 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 we're looking at this on a, on a standpoint that um, the business has uh, certain raw data and we want to be intelligible for our next actions. So that's why it's also called business intelligence. So it doesn't discover new questions to answer and to drive innovation. So again, we look at the data on a micro scale and we analyze the data, what that data means and generate the insights. So you don't necessarily have to, and to discover new questions. Like for example, if you have sales data, um, you you probably would want to answer the question, how much did I sell for this product on this month, and how much did I sell on the from from the previous year? So that's an existing question. Uh, you don't you data analytics doesn't necessarily generate a new question like, um, what could I possibly sell in the next five years? So it it doesn't do that. And again. This is on the machine learning side. So if you've noticed um, data analytics and probably if you've re if you've done your research as well, um, data analytics and data science are most of the time being interchanged by people who aren't really knowledgeable on the topic. However, the ones on the right hand side of my slide, these are all about data science. So data science uses unstructured data to generate insights, while data analytics uses structured data. We model, we build, and design it to create meaningful conclusions and actionable items. So you might wonder, what is structured data and unstructured data? So this is just an example. Um, on the on the on the left hand side here, you will see um like a paragraph so it's just a description um this workshop has a total of 30 attendees just an example 10 of which are aged between 18 to 24 15 aged between 25 to 30 and 5 are aged 30 and above and there's also another description saying that 20 participants have bachelor's degrees uh, five have masters while the rest are currently phd candidates so unstructured data, you can think of it as um, like someone telling you a story or someone telling you that, hey, this is this is what this is what the reality is of the business. Um, you have as a business, as a data analyst, 
you have to translate that data into something that is structured. So let's go, let's try to um, trace how we do it. So in a semi-structured data, if you can notice here in my slide, um, we, we already have certain taggings like name, uh, for example, Lawrence, the age range is 18 to 24, and their highest degree is bachelor's, and the list goes on. Uh, but if you want, if you really want to have the business, because we're, again, we're on the IT, we're on the tech side of things, uh, the business people that doesn't necessarily know how to read these semi-structured data. So we want to have these placed into a table. So just in a nutshell, um, data analytics is um, the process of uh, reaching this point, <laughs> reaching a uh, modeling, designing, and building your data such to a point where um, it is well structured so that you can generate insights. So here, just an example, this is just one table, uh, but we can, I can easily get, like I can easily tell um, the, like the, uh, the organizers that, hey, these are, these are mostly um, the attendees of the, of the workshop. So we might want to look into um, the, the age range more. We want to target these people. And we also might want to, to invest into um, reaching out to people with um, uh, bachelor's types of degrees, since they're mostly predominantly um, the ones that are attending the sessions. So that's just an example. Um, so next, how do we reach this point here? How do we how do we reach to a to a point where the data is well structured? So I'll I'll show you a, an Excel file. Um, as you can see, it's um, mostly it's uh, in my opinion it's very uh, undesirable <laughs> to look at as a data analyst. So most of my in, in my years of experience. Um, people would assume that creating reports like Power BI, since Power BI is, I mentioned that, it's a, it's a very, the, the entry to Power BI is very, is very low in terms of the learning curve. So they would assume that, okay, I have an Excel file, I have data, but uh, I, I want to translate this into Power BI, into a report. Uh, they would assume that, this data is enough to <laughs> to generate uh, to generate insights, but this isn't the ideal scenario. Uh, if you can see here, there are there are columns that are labeled actuals. Uh, there are columns that are labeled forecast, and then it's it's also split into different months, and the months are not um, are not structured in a manner where uh, it's really coinciding with each other in terms of having a forecast and then an actual an actual value. And also the files here, um, there are also certain taggings that uh, would need to be cleaned up. And you would see that there are blank fields. So whenever we ingest this into a system, this would uh, this would occur an error, incur an error rather. So yeah, this is just an example. So now, uh, I, I I would like to stress that this is the fundamental part of uh, being a data analyst. It's really data modeling. So data modeling is the process of looking at your data and figuring out how do I translate this data into tables that make sense for me to create an easy report with actionable insights. So the best way to, to have like a, an overview of data modeling uh, is uh, having relational diagrams. So if you can if you can notice in this uh, in this diagram here, I'll just flash the screen again. So there are budget, these are the budget uh, titles or descriptions, for example, and then there are actual um, 
actuals for for the budget so the ones with uh, accruals for example and then forecast and then there is also a full year budget here on the on the right hand on the right hand side now if we want to have a report where um the the data would be presented in a manner where the forecast does the forecast uh, actually hit uh, align with the with the actuals or did they exceed the budget that was allotted for them if you look at this file uh on one glance you you really can't tell and even if, if you do have a pivot table it would be very arduous to to do so so understanding this relational diagram would give you a uh, good idea on how to how to structure the data so what I did here, just an example, is I took a, the budget, the budget uh, description, and then uh, the cost center ID and the amount into one table. And I have a budget ID here. So you would notice that there are PKs and FK, FKs all over um, the different tables. So these means PK means primary key and foreign FK means foreign key. So the primary key is just the unique identifier for each table. Now, uh, 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 the best practice in um, when you're when you go deeper into data analytics is you is you have a unique identifier, so it's easier for you to locate um, items or rows in that particular table. So, for example, um, let's go back to the table once again. I have this um this uh, row here for example arc cta managed service solvento now these two are recurring as a description as a budget description now if i just tag it in a table where um i just have the description uh, if i want to look at the particular uh that particular line that particular row here I can't necessarily see it um, because uh, there are two there are two rows in that in that table. So if I if I can really drill it down to if I know the ID for example, then the system can easily identify um, what you what you what you're really looking for. So the primary key again it's the unique identifier of each table. Now what is a foreign key? So let's take this cost center ID as an example. So a budget, the budget that is being allotted is um, related to a cost center. Now, a budget can have um, multiple cost centers. So as an example, right here, um, this platform fees CDP here. Uh, sorry, let's 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 take this uh, data hub example here so it's shared between three segments it, it's it's indicated here in the cost center so that means that um one cost center can di have different permutations as well so if if you can if you try to collate everything into one table um it's gonna become uh, more tedious for you to generate insights so what the best practice is for you to do is to separate the cost center information into a different table. So now the primary key of the cost center, since again, it is unique, and I mentioned that there are different permutations for each cost center, um, you can easily see what the budget ID or what the budget description is tagged to easily when you when you indicate it in this manner so uh in in that sense uh it follows the same thing across the board so for for the forecast and then for the actuals so for the forecast now um you have a forecast for for a certain budget and of course you the foreign key has to be the budget id so when you when you try to plot the forecast and the actuals and the actual budget amount itself, they would easily merge each other um, 
in this manner. So we will have a better understanding of that um, using this uh, understanding relationships. So the reason why you relate the tables to each other, you separate the tables, you don't collate them into one big table for because it's on one hand, it's very um, tedious to work with. On the other hand, it's easier to to access the data if it's if it's structured in this manner. So again, uh, sorry, just to just to share the reason why it's called a relational diagrams diagram is because it's it shows the relationship between one table to another. And now we'll discuss um, what those relationships are, what types of relationships there can be. So an example is a one to one relationship. So this is a very straightforward example. Um, each country has one capital. So one country can't have two capitals. Um, that is that is the basic uh, relationship. So one table has a value, for example, Philippines. The other table, capital, has a, has a value of Manila. So when I try to connect the two, uh, it would be um, one to one. So the primary key here, the country will relate to the foreign key of country ID under the capital table. So another type, another common rela uh, relationship is the one to many. And this is this is really the most predominant um, real type of relationship in in um, in a in a regular setting. So an example here is a customer's table. So a customer, let's say um, you are a supplier for um, hardware supplies. So you have this customer, a recurring customer that has multiple orders. So um, they ordered on this month and then next month they have another different order and so on and so forth. So those orders have different values in itself. So they, they would probably buy um, cement, uh, 10 cement this month and then 10, 10, uh, 10 sacks of cement and then the next month they would buy 15. So when you try again, I, I would like to stress if you try to to, to collate everything into one table, um, it really doesn't help in generating those insights. If you separate this into a, into different tables and having them uh, relate into um, different um, relationships, you would easily get the insight that you actually need. So here, as an example, the co a customer can have multiple orders. So if you if you're also interested to research later, or if you or if you're taking a course in the bootcamp, um, one to many is actually uh, the same with many to one. Uh, you can just um, picture it as the orders table on the other end of the spectrum. So yeah. So proceeding to the less desirable type of relationship, it's the many to many um, relationship. So many to many uh, is not desirable. Uh, on one hand, um, it is very confusing if you could if you could see on, on this uh, different lines across the across the example. And on the other hand, um, when you try to locate data, um, you you would need to go through different steps to actually uh, generate that data if it has many to many. And in most databases, in most platforms, uh, it wouldn't even ingest data that has many to many relationship. Uh, you can probably uh, on on certain on certain scenarios. However, this is the most undesirable type of um, relationship. So just to recap. Um, we're, we've discussed the relational diagram. I hope it give it gives more of a perspective on why we split the tables up. Um, the two most common ones, the two most common relationships are one to one and 
one to many. And the undesirable relationship uh, is the many to many. So let's do a um, a sample application of how a sample scenario. Uh, how could we apply this concept into into as a data analyst? So let's say there's a background here that we are working as a business intelligence resource for a data analytics company. Now the company owns a reward system that's built on top of partner grocery chain stores. So the reward system could be like a card where you where you swipe the card or you scan the card. So you would ha you would earn certain points um, based on uh, on how much you you paid for or how much um, how many grocery items you bought. So the objective here is the marketing team wants us to list members who have not shopped and used the rewards memberships at all. So it's possible in this scenario where um, you can imagine that uh, someone um, registered for a for the rewards card, however, they haven't used it at all. Uh, they would also the marketing team would also like to know the top shopping cart items for each age distribution. So um, in this in this scenario, as a data analyst, you would start thinking, okay, how would my data look like? Uh, I need the information for my members. I also need information for sales. I also need information on the particular items of the shopping cart. So for example, you bought um, like paper towels uh, and then uh, grocery bags, etc., food items. And then it, it, it has to be broken down into individual items. So we know um, the amount, uh, how many was bought and how much it, it actually translated into rewards points. So lastly, they want to determine the stores which would need to drive more customers in becoming members and use the rewards program. So uh, I mentioned here, it's mentioned here in the background that they own um, different uh, grocery chain stores. So we would want, again, uh, in the data analyst mindset, you would think of this problem now that, okay, I also need to have an information of stores. So uh, I'll, I'll try to list it again, right? Let's do a recap. So first, a list of members. So the members should have age distribution. They should have their rewards ID and uh, they would need they it would it has to be related to where they they bought um they transacted or rather uh into different stores or in different locations. So next you would need uh, um the sales data itself. So the breakdown of the of the items, which customer bought those items, and lastly what store um that transaction occurred. And lastly, you would need another table for the store data because you want to determine, because marketing team wants to determine the location of stores. So probably they would run um, targeted ads to, to, the, to the location, like putting up flyers or putting up billboard ads, um, join the membership rewards um, now uh, if you haven't yet. So that's probably how they want to, to promote it. So in our store table, we want to have the location um, particularly. So I went ahead and um, listed down everything here. Uh, so, so now I created, as, a, as the data analyst um, running this scenario, uh, we would be creating these, tab these different tables. And the important thing is this this has to be sourced from um, from the marketing team and from the sales team and from the products team, which owns the membership uh, membership cards. So working as a data analyst, you will be um, engaging with different stakeholders. 
Because not one information here comes from one team only. So again, you would have the sales data, the actual sales data. So I, I named it as the order header where it, the, the components would include the order ID. Like the like I mentioned earlier, this is the primary key. Um, it would have a payment method, um, uh, data, uh, store ID, user ID. Again, these are the foreign keys to the different primary keys for store and user, user tables. Um, for the order detail, uh, the, pr the primary key here would relate back to the order ID from the order header. So it breaks down the product the product ID, the quantity of um, the products that were bought, the amount, um, and the cost as well. So it also then relates to a different um, table named product where the product ID relates back to the, to the order detail. So there's the description and the price for the product. So this would potentially answer um, the the requirement earlier where they want to see um, the uh, the top shopping cart uh, items for for all of the transactions. So with the user table as well, we want to have the age. Um, it's mentioned that it's they want to have like an age group as well. So I, I'd imagine that uh, the membership card would contain your birthday, um, the city that you're residing in, um, your first name, your last name. And with uh, and with data analytics with SQL and with Power BI, you can you can actually derive um, the age of the person and the age group even um, just from looking at the birthday. So doing doing so, you just need to <laughs> you just need to subtract the date today and their birth date itself. And then you translate it into years. So you get the age. Now you want to have a certain age group as well. So let's let's say the age group would be in uh, multiples of five. So 20 to 20, 21 to 25, 26 to 30, um, 31 to 35, and so on and so forth. And lastly, the store table, uh, it would contain your information here. Uh, under the order header, there is the store ID. So it relates back again here to the store ID. Um, you would have the chain store name, uh, the store name, actual store name. Uh, and I also requested the latitude and longitude of these stores so we can map it in the, in the report later on. So how did I create the report now? So again, we had, um, let's just do a recap here, um, what the requirements were. So first is a list of members who have not shopped and used the rewards membership at all, number one. Number two is they would like to know the top shopping cart items for each age distribution. That's the second. And third, they want to determine the stores which have less uh, buyers in a sense. Um, buyers from um, members in the rewards program. So those three questions have to be answered. So again, as the as a data analyst, we 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 already did the building, uh, the designing, the building, and the modeling of the data. So this is this is precisely what it it looks like. Um, and then we would actually proceed to generate the insights that were required by the business, so they could drive the actions from from their end so this is the report the sample report that i created so uh just to probably run through briefly um you can select a chain store if i want to see um the transactions made for those chain stores only um so there are three in this example i can also search specifically for a store name so if i want to drill down um, as a as a stakeholder or as a end user of this report, I can even generate insights as to um, what age uh, 
age range, um, top shopping cart items, and even preferred payment methods for each store itself. So imagine how rich the data, how rich we made the data look. And lastly, there is also a filter for the age group. So if you want to drill down on where um, certain uh, age groups buy, what they buy as well, um, you can do that. So um, just, just um, sharing on these things, right? There were only three uh, action items or insights that marketing team wants to wants to get from from us as the data analyst. Uh, however, uh, in my experience as a data analyst, it's really thinking about um, how rich the data is. So it it challenges your imagination. Uh, to what extent can I provide? Um, value to the business because I already have this data and you can actually get insights from, from this data. So not only did I answer the three uh, requirements earlier, but I, I provided even more. You, you can drill down to, to, the, to the lowest level of hierarchy that you want to check. So to answer those questions now, I have these different visuals. So I have here a member transaction by age group, um, the number of transactions here, and um, what their age group is. So in this report, I did it in multiples of 10 rather than 5. So I can easily see now as, as the marketing team or as the sales team or whoever looks at this report um, that people with ages 60 and above have more transactions using the membership uh, membership cards. And here in in the 20s, um, in the 20s range, there aren't many uh, members transacting using the membership cards. Now that could drive different uh, answers from their existing questions like um, do why does um, the 20s people, the 20s age group, don't use cards. So are they um, are they lazy enough to get the card from their wallet, <laughs> or or are the are the older people um, very keen to to this idea of having more rewards, earning more points, and receiving those um, benefits later on? So those types of questions can be answered. So I, I have another visual here: a top purchased item. Um, you can see uh, like a ranking of um, like what type of item was bought in the store. So again, if you want to drill down on each store, you can actually generate the insight just by looking at this report. So I, I can filter to the store name and then uh, I, can, I can easily look into, into what the most purchased items are by the members. All right. So next, um, I I have here like a bubble map of member transactions. So just looking at this map in an overview standpoint, uh, I can see that um, there are multiple transactions um, around this area, particularly in uh, in a store in one of the stores perhaps, and um, I could also see. Uh, the chain stores um, where they are located. So, for example, for Marketplace, there are lots of transactions in this store. Um, for Robinsons, Easy Mart, there are and there, there's an average. Averagely, they 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 are all the same. And for Robinsons supermarkets, um, there are uh, stores which has very little transactions um, in terms of rewards, uh, membership rewards usage. And I also have here the members without transactions table. So um, how, how, the, how did I manage to generate this, um, this, this table? I simply took the, um, the order header table. So I, I'll, I'll flash it again here. So I simply took the order header table and then I filtered to 
uh, I can easily see um, what users are here on the order header. So if I go to my user table, I would also know which members haven't had any transactions at all. So again, I, I'd like to stress uh, once again that having a very well-structured data can lead you to easily generate these types of insights. And lastly, this wasn't required from, from the marketing team, but uh, I included a preferred payment method here. Um, just, just an example, right? I mentioned that um, a data analyst has to really love solving problems and it really challenges you to be imaginat imaginative with your solutions. So you would see that I created an additional visual um, which uh, showcases what type of payment method they, they use. So again, if I want to drill down to an age group, I could easily see, okay, for the ages 60s and above, um, do they mainly use cash? For example, for the 20s, for the 20s group, do they use e-wallet? Because that's uh, a trendy way and Twin and and um, Generation Z and millennials are more acquainted with um, technology, so that's why. So again, this is more of um, having a deep appreciation of how we can generate the insights just by having a deep uh, understanding and good fundamentals of data analytics, which is again uh, data modeling. All right, so next topic would be uh, why should we choose uh, data analytics as a career? So I have six, um, six reasons here why. So the first is problem solving. So data analytics is a very fast paced and a very challenging career. And I mentioned earlier that um, when, whenever someone gives me a requirement, uh, provides me with a file and then shares me a requirement. Um, they would they would easily think that um, it's it's a straightforward thing to extract. For example, however, on the data analyst end, it's not really straightforward, especially if you have an extremely unstructured or uh, dirty quote unquote data. So. If you love problem solving, then data analytics is for you. So data analysts are also exposed to different kinds of data. With experience in different fields, you can easily become a successful data analyst. So if you are already an experienced professional, um, whether you've worked in, um, in sales, in marketing, and you want to shift your career into data analytics, with your experience in those fields, it would actually give you uh, an advantage to have um, to have uh, a more successful career. And however, if you haven't had any experience yet, um, it would surprise you that the data is actually very diverse when you when you engage with different stakeholders. So if you love looking at data, if you love looking at diverse data, different types of data, manufacturing data, logistics data, sales data, etc. Um, then data analytics again is for you. So the next one, the next point is um, data anal data analysts are on high demand. So if you do a quick search on um, LinkedIn or on Indeed or any platform that you uh, that you prefer, um, you would see that data analyst job postings are everywhere. So opportunities are everywhere and you just need to really grab that opportunity for yourself. And on an average, data analysts earn around 50, 50K uh, US dollars to around 80K US dollars. So that's a, a great motivator <laughs> uh, for, for being into uh, data analytics. So next, data analysts constantly evolve. So 
Um, we have very new technologies, emerging technologies right now. We have the metaverse, we have um, machine learning, we have artificial intelligence on the rise. I'm not sure if you are familiar with chat GPT, but recently it really garnered lots of attention uh, when it came out. Uh, so in, in the same way, um, as businesses transform to, to fit the current needs of the market, data actually evolves as well. And with you as a data analyst, uh, at every turn, whenever that data evolves, you would also evolve as well. So you would learn new skills, um, immerse yourself with new technologies, and really have uh, uh, expand your career even into further into further fields, like myself. So I started as a data analyst. Uh, I started as a business intelligence resource. And then I moved into being a uh, into the manufacturing, uh, quality assurance, and logistics field in Philip Morris. I moved to Procter and Gamble as an IT manager, a project manager, solution manager, and now I'm an automation engineer in Data Analytics Ventures Inc. So next would be uh, next reason why choose data analytics is uh, that data is everywhere. So practically every company needs a data analyst um even i would even argue that small businesses uh would need to have like a good understanding of data analytics as well uh if you're like if you're working on a startup or if you're working on a side hustle if you're working on a small business um you practically need to become a data analyst for you to have an effective uh effective business because again data analysts generates insights for the business and and it relates to the high demand of um, data analyst opportunities so lastly um this is a uh, sort of like a a, a cliche right? <laughs> that you you can shape the future so again i mentioned uh, multiple times how data analysts provides insights and from those insights businesses actually operate based on based on your prescriptions so you will have the power to influence effective change in any organization so you would not you would not feel that you're just a uh, an employee but you would actually feel very empowered um, since you you know the data very well of the company and you're actually driving um, the insights of and the action items for for the different for the different functions for the different teams for the different employees based on the reports that you share so how do you get started with your journey into data analytics so I would say that, Joining this um, workshop right now is already a good start. Um, you're immersed into uh, into the field. You have a hopefully you 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 go you got some good grasp of what data analytics actually is. Uh, but it really um, goes into um, how do you market yourself uh, when you try to apply for jobs. So I have some few tips here um, from building your resume, um, job applications, and um, job interview tips. So first, um, you really have to have a good career objective indicated at the start of your resume. So um, on the, um, what do you call this? Recruiters would look at your resume and then look at your um, career objective or career summary, executive summary of some sorts. And if you indicate uh, a clear and concise way of what you really want for your career, um, that is a good start for your resume um, on, on the side of the recruiters. So a photo of yourself is optional. Um, I, I, I would like to stress this as well um you can you can do include a photo of yourself in your resume uh however 
I noticed in my uh, as you know uh, in my career, I've been to four different companies in the last five years. Uh, I haven't included myself in a resume, a, a photo rather of myself. And uh, speaking with recruiters and HR professionals, um, having this photo on your resume would actually um, give some biases, uh, be it a positive one or a negative one. So I, I'd like to share that it's entirely optional. So the third one is you need to highlight technical skills, soft skills, and achievements, if any, in your previous experiences. So I, I noticed that when when I'm hiring, um, because I I work as a ma I worked as a manager as well, and I had experience in hiring um different people. Um they would skip on their um they would skip on their skills, their actual skills. They would only have like a description of what they what they did or what they do, what they know, but uh, technical skills mostly being covered in the resume, but soft skills are actually very important as well. So if you have good stakeholder management, if you have good um, collaboration with different types of people, in different cultures, then you have to you have to indicate it in in that sense. Achievements, if any, of course, you have to be always proud of your achievements. So, when you break down your experience, you 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 also have to mention how you provide value. Um, this is very important for recruiters since this gives them an idea of what value you can provide to 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 their company. And lastly, um, in my opinion, one page is enough. So you you have to be concise with your experience, with your skills, and everything has to fit in one page. Um, if you if you do it well enough, uh, it can actually fit in one page. So next is job app job application. So you're now you've now built your resume. You want to apply for a job. So my first tip would be not to be intimidated by the job description. So most of the times when we um, look at uh, job postings online, um, reading the job description, like the first paragraph, and then we don't, we, we're not necessarily knowledgeable on the topic. Uh, we, skip on, <laughs> we skip on that posting and proceed to the next. And especially if it includes something that we're not, particularly well skilled at like collaboration with different teams if you're if you're a, an up and coming IT professional or even uh, professional in in a general sense so don't be intimidated by the job description and apply for a job even if you don't meet the minimum requirements so i do believe that the minimum requirements is only set for recruiters to have like a a bar or like a standard to what um to what type of employee they want to recruit they want to hire however if you do have faith and um you you're extremely confident in yourself that you can actually meet the the requirements that they have even if you don't like let's say um 3 to 5 years of experience in data analytics and now you You've barely started. However, if you're very confident with your with your skill, go and apply for the job. Don't 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 um don't pass on it. So the third one would be to apply to as many jobs as you can. So having more potential job interviews could actually hone your skill in marketing yourself. Having these job interviews would not only allow you to uh, speak more eloquently, but it also allows you to um, have a deeper understanding of your current skill set and how you market it outwards to recruiters. And build your profile in LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is, I think it's a very, um, recruiters would, uh, if I'm not sure if you guys have been applying for jobs in the past years, but recently, they would indicate 
in one of their fields a, a LinkedIn profile. So it's good to build your LinkedIn profile. And if you if you have other platforms that you prefer, uh, Indeed, Job Street, and the rest, um, you can do so as well. Oops, sorry. So next is the job interview. So now you've you've built your resume. Um, you've applied to different um, positions, to different job postings, and you're now scheduled for a job interview. So these are five quick tips that I have. So first is be confident, uh, know your strengths, and acknowledge your opportunities for growth. Um, I'd like to say that um, you can fake it till you make it. However, um, it's also to your detrimental if you don't acknowledge that um, you are limited in in certain skills. So it's it's really important to be confident whenever you go into that job interview. So know your skills and acknowledge your uh, your opportunities. So next is be concise with every response. So uh, an interviewer asks for a question. Um, you can expound on it. Um, you can you can share a long response. However, it always has to tie up back to the question, and it has to be concise. So if they ask you, um, what is your uh, opinion whenever someone um, tries to um, derail the project, for example, <laughs> or how will you approach it? Uh, so you have to really be concise. If if you can have a step by step um, uh, response to your interviewer, so and then whenever you do give a long answer, you do give a long response. Um, give a summary before you respond before you share your response so you it's good to outline the um the discussion like whenever you're asked to um share your experience in data analytics for example and then you would sh you would tell the interviewer that um number 1 i've been to this company i worked uh and developed this solution number 2 I've 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 engaged with different types of stakeholders and number three, uh, so on and so forth. So and after you provide a long answer, you need to summarize it once again. So uh, uh, I what I learned in my um in my in, in the course of my career is uh, it's a good practice to give a summary beforehand. And then summarizing it again after um, giving the response. So it's like um, uh, closing the argument or closing the closing the deal <laughs> in that sense. So lastly, you need to present yourself as if you're someone that they should hire. So it 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 all relates back to being confident. Um, you need to present yourself in a manner where. Um, you are someone that is already their employee. <laughs> so that's how that's how I, I approach my job interviews. And I think that's it. So just to recap, um, we, we discussed uh, I discussed my journey into data analytics. Uh, I discussed the fundamentals, the data modeling and understanding the relational diagrams. And lastly, I also shared on how you can get started with your career. And that is all for today. And I appreciate the time for taking this workshop. I appreciate everyone's um, everyone's um, uh, time in, in, in attending. So yeah, Aldrich, take it, take it away. All right. Thank you so much, Jude. So of course we've of course we've learned a lot no um but before we proceed to the question and answer first portion i'd like to share something all right so um just to tell you we're skillspire so we're an online coding bootcamp school so this coming february 4 will be the start of our intro to data analytics bootcamp so it's a 12-week bootcamp that can be done part-time so if you are interested we have a free 
15 minute career counseling session with a very great career counselor. Just scan the code below to book a meeting with her. So she's our CEO. She's um, Yasmin Ali. She's been um, featured already to TEDx. So our vision and mission is, of course, to help people transition into tech and most of especially um, those people who are in the, you know, the marginalized and, you know, the the colored area. So anyway, um, let's now proceed to the question and answer portion. Um, if anyone wants to ask any question, you could unmute yourself or you could also chat in the chat box. All right. Yep. So feel free, anyone, uh, if you have uh, any questions related to data analytics, um, my experience or anything else. Yep, and so you have a go question ahead. for uh, Jude. Yep. Yeah, so my question is this. Um, I have some experience in data analytics as well, but then uh, a lot of the jobs that I was applying for were entry level, which I felt like um, were aligned with my skill set. However, I send out like a lot of or apply to like a lot of online jobs and you don't hardly hear anything back um, and so my question is like how can you optimize your time because you can probably send out a thousand resumes and it's so easy because there might be another thousand people doing the same thing um, and at that point it just becomes a numbers game so how do you um, what would be the best use of your time to go about that instead of just applying online and hoping that someone will reach out yeah, that's a great question, Deep, and thanks as well for sharing your experience. So uh, in my opinion, um, if you are looking for opportunities, uh, if you're if you're asking how it how you can best optimize your time, um, there are if you if you're definitely looking for a long term job or like a um, a full time position, uh, you can do send out those um, resumes, and I think you should you should keep on you should keep on doing so. Uh, you should also try to build and market yourself um, in the resume. And but lastly, what I what I actually want to what I actually want to stress is that if you have um, if you have the time to spare, um, there are lots of um, freelancing opportunities as well in in online so be it upwork or fiverr uh, i'm i'm not familiar with other um platforms those are the ones that i'm familiar with uh, however if you if you do have the time um try to try to do some side um um how do you call it like applications to to do those um to do those freelancing opportunities, and I think Aldrich can can also provide insight because I think in the slide he shared earlier, um, they have they do have a consulting session for for career opportunities. So yeah, Aldrich, do, would you like to share some more? Yeah, um, thanks for your question, Deep. Again, uh, we have a free 15-minute career counseling uh, session that you could always book um, anytime. And again, it's, it's it's still just through MS Teams. So um, it, it would be best to just, you know, book a session with our career counselor, Yasmin Ali. Okay. Okay, so you guys can help with, uh, in terms of like how to go about the job search process? Yeah, yeah. So it would be better deep to, you know, uh, just book a meeting with with Yasmin Ali. So she's really uh, she's helped a lot already uh, to, to, you know, people who wants to tra transition their career into tech. So we've had a lot of students already who has already their full time jobs right now. So, okay. yep. Jude, um, I think thanks deep again. Um, Jude, I think there are questions in the chat box if you want to answer them. Yeah, sorry. Um, I think for this one, what time or day is the boot camp going to be held? Uh, Aldrich can share probably later. Yeah, I answered one. already. Yeah, in the chat box. 
Okay, right. yeah, sorry. Great. <laughs> sure. So what are some tools or software we could use that might be freeware to practice the skill set? So you can download um, Power BI. That's first and foremost. You can try to um, explore on, and it's free. Microsoft has a free course. All the courses actually in, in Microsoft are free in terms of starting and building your skill set in Power BI. Uh, I think Power BI is a very good entry to data analytics. SQL is um, already like a programming language, so it might be intimidating at start. Uh, there, you can do SQL in different platforms. There are different types of um, SQL, um, SQL platforms as well. Uh, Python is a free uh, application. You can install it in your on your device, uh, and you can create tables. And there are different tools to view your tables as well. Uh, so, so yeah, there. The, probably to summarize again. Um, try learning Power BI as a start. Um, practicing with data sets, it's, it's available online. Go to Kaggle. Um, there's uh, deep, um, deep resources in the internet uh, for data sources, data sets. And you can, you can start working in Power BI. Next would probably be to learn SQL in free platforms such as Python. And I do believe there are courses online for that. And Aldrich, if you could also share if you have some some uh, courses in Skillspire. So yeah, probably yeah. late. Yeah. 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 So what is the relationship between data analytics and fin fintech? So fintech, uh, you can think of fintech as um, online banking, really, and Data analytics has always been important for banks. So I would say that in fintech, there are indeed lots of data analysts. And I would like to share as well that banks have their different um, types of databases that they maintain. They are mostly on premises, so they, they rent a space and or they put it, they place it on their uh, main building and they have an entire infrastructure where they protect their data. And in a similar fashion, uh, but in a different field, in fintech, they host everything in cloud, I believe. Um, so everything is, um, they, they, it is outsourced to AWS, Amazon Web Services or Azure. Um, so to answer the question once again, um, data analytics is closely tied to fintech. Uh, you can generate lots of insights like um, what your age group, what type of transactions do you do? Because fintech has multiple types of transactions like sending money to a different account on the same platform, sending money to banks, or purchasing um items or transacting using the application. So yeah, it's it's practically um, closely, it, it's there. <laughs> Data analytics is there. So I hope that answered the question. So I'll proceed with the next one. I am a mechanical engineer working in manufacturing. What types of software would be useful to generate the business insights for sales or marketing growth? Hmm. So you're in manufacturing and you want to generate insights for sales. Um, I do believe that in manufacturing, for example, because I worked in Philip Morris and I worked in the plant, actually. I, I have experience in um, working in manufacturing. And mostly what they do is they relate the um, production data into their sales projection. So if you're asking for a type of software that is useful, um, it's really more on the reporting side. So I, I'm I'm basically like a spokesperson for Microsoft now. <laughs> they should pay me, but yeah, Power BI is a really great way to start. And 
you you do need to have that understanding first of um where the data should be coming from so that's that's very important so although you have the software you need to have the data as well and you want to know uh, based on those data what types of business insights you can generate for sales or marketing i hope that answered the question sorry are there any other questions yeah i have um, a question yeah can you hear me um is the, is the boot camp free hi jeremy I Thanks, thanks for asking. So actually, the bootcamp isn't free, but we're on the uh, more affor affordable uh, side. If you're interested, you could visit our website. It's skillspire.net. So the price okay. is there. So we also have payment options. So yeah, I hope I answered your question. Well, what, can you like give a rough estimate? Right. So um, it's about 6500 But yeah, we right now we're offering a 500 off discount for workshop attendees. Okay. So yeah, once yeah. once you talk with Yasmin, once you talk with Yasmin, you book a call with her. Just tell her that I gave you the 500 discount because you attended the workshop. So yeah, she'll approve that. Anything about um does does your um occupation have to do with anything about like uh data prep or extraction or anything like that or is it strictly analysis? Also, do you use uh pandas or matplotlib? Uh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, Jeremy, are you asking me or are you asking Jude? Jude, sorry. I don't know. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I sorry. For for pandas, I don't use pandas. Uh not I, I've heard of the technology of the platform, but no, I I, I don't. Uh, I think the prior question was the um the more on the uh data prep and data modeling, right? So yeah, data, I data prep and extraction type deal extraction, probably not yeah. so much right yeah. so the etl side yeah extracting transforming and loading so aldrich i think so i i'm uh i i'm just currently being uh as a guest here in in this in this connect so the boot camp will be handled by a different uh professional uh data analytics pro professional so they might uh have the complete answer to that but Aldrich would do you would you know the overview content of of the boot camp right sorry so um I'll share my screen so just to give you an idea guys uh wait yep here so this is our website, skillspire.net, Intro to Data Analytics. In this Excel, SQL, Power BI, and Python course, you learn the necessary skills to become a junior data analytics analyst. So it's a 12-week part-time course, real-world free seven-minute application. Okay, so our um, uh, we have a class starting February 4 and ending on April 29th. And this is the schedule. So it's you can do it part time. We have online. If you're in Washington Bellevue, we also have a face-to-face. Uh, -face. So what will I learn from this course? This course will teach you how to use data to make informed decisions. So these are the um, course outline. So Excel, professional development. And of course, we will help you with your resumes and of course, uh, prepare you with your interview questions. It's part of the 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 service that we, you know, we give to you. So who teaches this course? Um, the I think the instructor for February 4 will be Alfonso Rojas Alvarez. So currently Kennedy is handling a, a data analytics course too right now. So payment again, so 4499 total, monthly installments 499, 500 off for workshop attendees. All right. So I hope I answered. Also, we have a um, deluxe data analytics track because we have a advanced data analytics course. So if you're curious, we also have other courses. All right, so just visit our website and um, just explore our website and yeah. Okay, real quick, no nonsense. So um, what, what um, type of technology are we going over in that course here? Is it like SQL, Power BI? Stuff like that, that um, Jude went over previously. 
kind of, a little bit. Right, so again, let me share my screen. So it's actually here in the website. Um, here. So Excel, Power BI, and SQL to collect, sort, and analyze large data sets. All right. So okay. analyze real world data sets to create dashboards and visualizations to present your findings. Yeah, I see that. Okay, that's good. Hey, All right. Um, Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, I'll just have a question. Yep. Um, who is this course not right for? Right. Who is this course not right for? That's a good question. Um, well, actually, most of our students currently enrolled right now are really from different backgrounds. So there's there's one student who was a previously cashier in Walgreens, and then he just explored um, boot camps and then he got enrolled. Then, you know, right now he's currently working as a uh, full stack web developer. So, yeah, um, I think it's for everyone deep, everyone who wants to venture or transition their career into tech. I hope I answered your question. Anyway, um, one last question, probably, Alde, from Robert. Right. So I have completed right. basic SQL, and while I'm waiting to see if I can get the advanced course, um, you're doing function views and stored procedures. I started taking an online. All right. Yeah. Are these subjects worth it? Yes, definitely worth it. Uh, I think the basic SQL course will only cover um, select select functions, creating uh, tables, um, the relational diagrams, um, um, star schemas, uh, understanding different types of data models. Um, the advanced SQL would cover most of these different, um, like more extensive uh, functions for SQL, which would include stored procedures. So these are definitely worth it, uh, especially the stored procedure. So just to just to share some perspective, uh, just a quick one. Um, when you try to log into any kind of website, um, it actually accesses a database on the back end. Now, if you the most of the attacks that came from um, from the early 2000s was a basic SQL command. Um, it's a select statement. Uh, they type it into the password, and then when they click on login, uh, they would see they would they would be redirected to a different um, to a different screen, not the actual website. They would be redirected, and they would see all the backend data <laughs> that is um, that is in the system. So stored procedures can protect these types of attacks. So if you're asking if these are um, worth it, then yes, definitely. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Robert, for your last question. Anyway, guys, um, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I hope we provided an added value to you guys. So if ever you're curious on how to transition your career into data analytics, again, um, you can, uh, you know, just scan the QR code. So um, guys, I, if you want to say thank you to Jude, you could always, um, you know, chat it in the chat box or, you know, you could un unmute your mic, right? So thank you so much also, Jude, for your time. And yeah, um, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I hope you have a good evening. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Real Thanks quick a lot. Question. Thanks, everyone, for having me. Real quick question. Is it when I, you complete the program, what, is there a certificate that we can yeah. show? Yeah, hi, Jeremy. Yep, there is. Yep, there will be a certificate. And we will, we in the website also, you can explore it. It says we, we can provide, provide you with a guaranteed internship. If you're 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 hard in finding jobs, so yeah, to okay, build your experience great. in resume. That's great. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye.